Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Next conversation this morning is going to the, of course, uh, reconciliation between Atiku Abubakar and Nyesom Wike. One of the stories that we shared in the news this morning is on the punch. It says, Atiku Mits Wike says, Nigerians waiting for the PDP in 2023. I'm going to start with that. Uh, and see how that that goes. Uh, good morning to our guest. We have uh, first of all Ose Aneni, who's uh, joining us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Great to have you. We also have a uh, risk management expert, Mr. Ibrahim Oshinowo. Uh, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, everybody in the studio, and good morning, viewers. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us. All right, so let, let's start with the story in the punch this morning. The way it was reported, it says Atiku meets Wike, says Nigeria is waiting for the PDP in 2023. <coughs> I'm going to have you both speak on that. I will start with uh, Mr. Oshinowo. Um, quickly respond to that story. Um, let, let's know what your thoughts are. Um, good morning, viewers, and good morning, uh, friends and um, allies. Um, there's nothing really special about uh, the headline. Um, is their party's affairs. They know what they are doing. <clears throat> and then former Vice President, His Excellency, Atiku Abubakar, visiting um, Governor Wiki. It's no news. He knows um, the capacity of Wiki when it comes to, you know, holding their party's um, structure, when it comes to funding, when it comes to South-South region and, you know, He's also working towards, you know, nominating Wiki possibly as his vice president. He knows that him coming back to clinch the tickets will be hard without Wiki. So Wiki um, is one of the strongest pillars of PDP. So uh, it's not news at all. It's nothing special about the, you know, party reconciliation. But what I'm against is um, former vice president saying he's coming to take over from APC. I think that's a daylight dreaming, you know. So it's nothing special about what they are doing. So we wish them all the best, and uh, we are waiting for their candidates. Why, why do you why do you describe it as a uh, a daylight dream, like you've mentioned? Uh, yeah, and so many factors. Um, he has been the vice president of this country, and he has been given so much opportunity to turn around things. While he was there, he refused to do that. Um, a state, um, Adamawa, the poverty level in that state is humongously huge. Um, economy as at that time when it was there, it didn't do much apart from privatization of few communication companies. And of course, it was actually championed by uh, uh, former President Lulusha Mubasanjo. So he didn't do much while he was a vice president. Rather, he engaged in fighting his boss to stop us. So we are not expecting much from him, you know. He's claiming he's a, he's a daylight economist now with the uh, help of um, um, former Governor Obi. But of course, we are sure that um, uh, even his relationship with the Afeni Ferry, claiming that um, he's going to do uh, the supposedly, uh, what is it called, um, uh, devolution of power. I'm very pretty sure that Chipu uh, would not do that. Don't forget that he's a member of APC before. He's a founding, possibly a founding member of APC. So we know what he can do. He has tested both sides, and we know him on both sides as well. So there's nothing special. He's just dreaming. Of course, don't forget Tamboa is also there, a young man, a lawyer, a former House of Reps member, a former Speaker of Federal Republic of Nigeria, and a governor, a young man. So, and don't forget also, I'm trying to recall you, which I'm sure you know as, a, as one of the sounding press uh, journalists I know, you know that there is a huge relationship between Wiki and Tamboa. So... Uh, he had his best shot in 2019. So I would advise him to go on a retirement and um, um, see how this country, how he can support uh, APC in terms of policy. And of course, if there are gray areas where he wants to raise his point, he, he can do that. That's allowed. Okay. So All right. um, let's, uh, let's now move to Ose and um, and uh, get your thoughts on this. Um, there, of course, has been have been postulations here and there with regards to 2023. Um, I hope that we'll have time to also, you know, bring in the possibility of uh, these two persons that we've mentioned now instead supporting a younger, more progressive uh, candidate. But let's start with your thoughts on 
um, their reconciliation first and also the um, statements with regards to Nigerians eager to see the PDP back in power in 2023? Yeah, um, I, I, thank you. I thought we were coming on a political show. I didn't know it was a comedy show we were coming on. Uh, just, you know, jumping off the back of the previous speaker's statements. Uh, in 2019, Atiku scored 11 million odd votes. Um, I don't see how any serious risk analyst, I think, introduced him as would dismiss the ambitions of such a person. Um, Atiku was, yes, he was vice president, and yes, he did lead the privatization exercise, which arguably was the most successful exercise that the Obasanjo led administration conducted between 1999 and 2003. Um, so, again, I don't see how you say he did nothing, but then you actually pinpoint the only thing that arguably was the success. The success story of that administration. You remember the, the, the liberalization of the telecom sector, the privatization of those national industries, including NITEL. Um, so it, it's, it's really, really curious when you speak about Atiku and then you talk about the current state of Adamawa, for instance. It, it's almost, it would be like me coming on here and talking about how APC has failed. And instead of blaming Buhari, I start blaming uh, President, uh, Vice President Osim Banjo. Um, Atiku is a political force, uh, whether he's with the PDP or the APC, uh, and let's admit that, just like Wiki is a political force as well. And it's instructive that Atiku saw it fit to start his reconciliation tour with um, a visit to Port Harcourt and Wiki's residence. Recall in the 2018 uh, PDP primaries, there was a very public falling out when Atiku won the primaries that, was held, that were held in River State. Wiki at the time was also very publicly supporting Tambua. And Atiku won that primaries in Wiki's backyard. Um, you know, so it's, it's good news, I think, for the party in particular that we are seeing this reconciliation. And, you know, projecting forward to 2023, where President Buhari will not be on the ballot, if you see these two political juggernauts coming together um, to push for people policies uh, and to kick the, the APC out of power, I don't think any serious political analyst would dismiss it. Um, that's why I started like by saying that uh, you know I thought we were coming here to discuss politics, not well, uh, comedy. Well, you know, uh, but to your to your other to, yeah, go to ahead. your go ahead. To your to your to your actual question you asked about what this means uh, for the PDP. I I, I think. Um, and it's really unfortunate, just given the six years that the APC has been in power, I, I think the report card is out on them already. You know, we're seeing record levels of unemployment, record levels of inflation, record levels of insecurity. Um, I think uh, I saw a budget analysis come out that for every one Naira that Nigeria generates, about 97 Kobo goes to service debt. We're even still borrowing more debt. Um, we just saw the recent news where the U.S. has blocked uh, the sale of arms to Nigeria. Um, and, you know, you just sort of like see a perfect storm coming together against the APC and whatever tendencies or ambitions they may have heading into 2023. Um, the PDP really doesn't have to do anything. Um, the APC seems to be on the course of um, inclusion. You saw um, Kiyamu the other, um, yesterday, a couple of days ago, writing that the APC primary slated for tomorrow shouldn't hold because of the Supreme Court judgment in the Ondo case. Um, you are seeing tensions and friction between the Tinubu tendency and the Buhari tendency in, in the APC. Um, I, I'm worried, you know, because I think for a democracy, you need to have two vibrant uh, political parties sort of like butting heads against each other. And I'm worried that an implosion of the APC might affect Nigeria's um, democratic uh, journey. I believe the okay. PDP will win, but I would like to see, you know, a more coherent uh, political party or more co coherent leadership from the from the party in power. Okay, so let's move away from the PDP now and, and uh, speak a little bit about the APC. 
Um, I, I would like to also speak about their similarities because there's a lot of people who are also saying they don't even want either of uh, both parties in 2023. Uh, Mr. Oshinoo, uh, let's get you to respond with regards to the um, implosion, like um, Ose Andeni has just mentioned, in the APC. There seems to be some levels of crisis here and there. With the newspapers this morning carry, or all of them are speaking about Buni and the crisis with regards to you know, his position in the APC. Um, would you agree that the APC is imploding and uh, you know, it's the, the internal crisis may you know, be its uh, biggest problem in 2023? You know, um, I would not want to join issue with, um, you know, subsection of the media who believes that what the PDP agents, you know, the cyber agents are doing, or those people that are speaking for maybe one or two presidential candidates, they're trying to score full of prognosis. Let me use this common word, that common word, prognosis into the affairs of APC. If you try to look at the Supreme Court, the leading judgment of the Supreme Court, it never, that judgment never at any point against the leadership of His Excellency, uh, Governor Mi Marabuni, as the leader of the party. And I'm wondering where, of course, um, Festus Kiyamo has the right you know, to submit his own legal opinion. As we look at what the, um, the legal advice of the party, um, Chief Nia Kintola SCN, he has made his own presentations and also scrutiny of, of the judgment. You know, the judgment also does not describe or ascribe certain positions on the leadership of the party. So the legal, we are, of course, the party has set up their legal team that will look into the judgment and how the Congress will hold. And I can, I'm happy to tell you that the Congress will hold. But PDP, don't mind all these, um, you know, you know, noise makers on the on the on the internet, you know, giving, you know, I watch my friend, you know, we say Bole Kaja legal advice on the internet. The party will go on, uh, the, um, the party's Congress, World Congress will go on as scheduled tomorrow, and I can assure you that there is no legal recourse anywhere. So we are going on with the party. Um, Congress and simultaneously we're going to go on with the world as well and the state and finally the convention. So I will advise those who are submitting their opinions on the internet, on the, on the TVs, to keep that to themselves. And particularly I will advise the PDP to focus more on their party. They are losing in terms, they are losing National Assembly members, they are losing governors into our party. So I wonder this, uh, what my friend um, Anena is saying about APC. Maybe he's not living in this country. Maybe he doesn't All know right. when Atiku is the member of APC. Maybe he doesn't know when Atiku is running up and down to come to APC, leaving one party to another. You understand? So I, I, I don't think he's living in this country. If, then if he does, he should try and go back and do his research very well. Okay. You know, um, Atiku, I would like to touch on Atiku because he made some assertion. If you're going to allow me to make this point, that APC, um, the PDP does not need to do anything. Of course, you are not doing anything. In most of the states you are, you are not doing anything. That's why those postnots are leaving. Safra left, um, boy left, um, uh, the gentleman, what, what was his name? Also left uh, the other governor. Also about three governors left. National Assembly member, all of them are coming to our party. Recently, Tuwabushi, a senator, is a, a stronghold of PDP, Delta State, left the APC. So what, I wonder what he's talking about. So I will advise that uh, uh, we should be serious. He said he doesn't know what why a risk manager should to a risk professional should be speaking in that time. Of course, Ms. he doesn't Ms. know Ms. what to say. Ms. Ms. Oshinawa, in, in, if you can move into this. I'm coming, please. Let me learn. You, you think you allow him to speak when it, when it was? Yeah, I'm okay. letting you speak. I'm just saying I want you to you know quickly say this. The, the reason the PDP governors are moving to the APC, is it because the PDP is not currently seen as a strong enough party or the APC is doing exceptionally well and everybody wants to be associated with it? One... Well, let me tell you, I am a Democrat. Um, if you look, if you go through my profile, I'm a Democrat. I expect a very vibrant opposition. You know, which is Secondo's leadership is in question. One of the party members in those state has taken the leadership of Uche Secondo's to court. 
Wiki and Wishy Secondus, they are not in good time. Allegation of corruption on, on the NWC, led by Secondus. So APC at this point in time, this is a party that has invested so much in human capacity development. In terms of, of course, let's minus the COVID era that took almost a year of this administration. In terms of infrastructure, in terms of what, you know, the greater, greatest catastrophe that this country must have, well, must have witnessed if the federal government did not manage the COVID issue if very well. And every, everybody in this country, including the foreign missions and other, and the West, acknowledge the effort of President Momo Dugwari by handling the COVID issue in this country, US for that matter, almost almost 600,000 of their of their citizens lost their life to COVID. That's all they all in their all they have at their disposal. So I wonder when somebody, you know, all these um, all the, uh, you know, you know, you need to you know we need to be serious in this country. Some people will just come up online or right. on TV and say things without even without even God fair in mind mind. How can you say all right, Mr. if Mr. look at other nation that has suffered COVID, look at India. In this country, this government, this present APC government manages despite all the shortfall in whole capacity and revenue, manages the COVID issue gallantly. All right, Mr. Janoa, can you hold on? Give it, we have to be patriotic. We Absolutely. have to give kudos. And all these governors that are coming, they could see the effort of the federal government. They could see what the party is doing. That's why we are attracted to so many Nigerians. Right. That's why they want to come right, to hold, our party. Hold on, Mr. Oshinowo. A governor in the West Kindly is hold on, Mr. Oshinowo. So there's no opposition. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, no um, Osa um, Neni, um, quickly, your response to that. Um, <laughs> the, the strength of the PDP as it stands currently, the defections of its governors to the APC, um, and, um, you know, do you, do you see the PDP currently as a strong opposition party? Um, as, um, well, basically. You know, so, you know, like I said, it seems that when you come this show, um, what's the, the clearest measure of investment in human capital, uh, capital development? It's your education budget. Year on year, from double digits, almost 20%, budgeting that the PDP was doing in 2014 in education, we're down to about 6%. So how anybody will sit here and tell me that when you're investing 6% in your educational sector, you're investing in human capital, it's, it's, it's frankly ridiculous. You know, um, and, 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 and the point when we say we're well, Democrats, let's be serious. So I'm a PDP member, and it was this type of hubris that cost the APC in River State where they didn't have any candidates. This same hubris. It was what cost APC in Zamfara, where they didn't have any candidates. This same hubris. It was this same hubris that cost them in Bayelsa, an election that they won freely and fairly. But this same hubris led them to lose it. And if you are a Democrat, you will say that every election should be a reflection of the will of the people. But when you have political actors putting personal ambitions over their own laid down principles and guidelines, you have this type of chaos that the APC is, 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 is projecting. So, you know, you, you, you say, for instance, that it is PDP actors who are talking about the Ondo State judgment. What the APC is doing is not my business. It is first of Kaya Kayamo, a senior advocate of Nigeria and the Minister of State of the APC, that is warning the APC. It is the special ad senior special advisor on political affairs to the president, Ojutu, Senator Ojutu, that is warning the APC. It is Senator Ita Iyan that is warning the APC. So how anybody will sit here and dismiss these, these warnings as the postulations of social media uh, erads, I think he called it. It's, it's frankly befuddling and, and, and it, it confuses me. And my, con and my worry, honestly, my worry is that if it happens and APC holds the Congress, it's in all likelihood that we will challenge it. And you might have a situation where you don't have APC candidates on the ballot. And no Democrat wants that. Whether the APC wins or the PDP wins, no Democrat wants to see a single state, um, single party state. And that's the direction the hubris of the APC is pushing this country into. You know, so, and when you talk, so when you talk about the, the, um, the, 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 the chances of the, of the PDP in 2023. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking mostly about the defections now and, and you know, the strength of, of the PDP as an opposition party. 
Um, you know, he's pointed out three governors who have defected, you know, and some National Assembly members. Um, you know, what's your response to that? You know, and does the PDP it's, it's still have the strength? It's very simple. In, um, in Zamfara State, for instance, where Matawali defected, the governor who won that election, I'm saying it's on television, the governor who won, the APC governor who won, scored about 500,000 votes. Matawale scored 100,000 votes. Zamfara is an APC state. So any politician who has is looking at his future and wants to, to continue succeeding or winning in the state, he, had, he literally had no choice. He was not elected by the people. So we all knew in the, AP, in the PDP that he would defect. Um, the Ebony State Governor who left, made it, made it, it was very clear that he was looking for space or, or articulation of his presidential um, ambitions. That's why he left. It was for nothing else. It was literally for nothing else. And Ayade, you know, you know, we, we always forget that the Nigerian political space, our democracy, this democracy is barely uh, 16 years, 16 odd or 22 years old. And so you see people moving from space to space. And um, it's funny he didn't mention the Edo state governor, who was an APC governor, who left and came to the PDP and won an election. And I'm not going to talk about that because in, in, in as, as our politics evolves, you will see people trying to find expression in spaces that they are comfortable in. And now the Edo state governor, is, or Basaki, is comfortable in the APC. We saw in 2018, five PDP governors and 49 legislators left the PDP to the APC. They have all come back. Atiku was one of them. Saraki was one of them. <laughs> Sheh Hussani was one of them. So when anybody comes here and says, oh, hang on, people have defected. So therefore, that means it, it doesn't, it, it, it betrays, I think, a lack of understanding of the nature of evolving um, and young democratic democracies like the PDP is. Right, I expect, for instance, that leading into 2023, you will see a lot more defections from the PDP to the APC and from the APC to the PDP when their political ambitions are denied when we hold our primaries. It's inevitable. And I, and, I, and, I, and I think it's responsible to put it out there that that's the nature of our politics today. When we have concrete ideologies, maybe in 50 years' time, when you know that if you are in the APC, you are a socialist, and if you are in the PDP, you are a Republican or, or conservative, conservative Democrat, then you will see people start aggregating along those lines. Okay. But right now, there are okay, platforms Nani. that people use to express their political ambitions. All right, quickly, um, you know, and this is going to be to both um, of you. Um, I'm, I'll start with Mr. Oshino. I, I want to you know, talk about you know, candidates for 2023 it might be too early. There's still a lot of time, you know, to make these decisions, to hold congresses and to postulate here and there. Um, but would you, you know, be feeling that it's necessary that we start to look for a young and progressive uh, minded candidate for the next elections? I'll start with the APC. And of course, I'll say you can also speak with regards to PDP. Atiku Abubakar, you know, there's two rumors that he might want to run again. Would you advise that he maybe should instead push a younger, you know, a more progressive-minded candidate. Mr. Shinoa, well, let's start with you with that. Oh, well, thank you. Um, we are, of course, the party has uh, commenced the process of selecting our candidates. And what I can assure you is that we're going to bring out the best of all um, in terms of young, vibrant, and, you know, and people's candidates that will satisfy um, um, the need of Nigerians. So the process has commenced. Of course, we're starting our Congress tomorrow. Then we'll be able to determine that in future. I can't actually say, you know, who and who is going to be the candidate of the party. But of course, those factors you just mentioned um, will be highly considered in terms of, you know, um, selecting our candidates. Um, also, uh, I will advise uh, or say, my dear friend, to um, use this opportunity of, you know, our, our revalidation. We can still give him some time to join our party. You know, I can see him as my friend, who is also a young man who can actually contribute to our party. You know, you can join. I'm giving you an invitation. I can send you a link or ask uh, one or two of our, our registration, or probably from your state, 
to give you the opportunity, a waiver for that matter. Of course, because don't forget that Tiku is still coming back to APC. So I can tell you that for free. So you as my friend, Nanaka, I'm inviting you, I'm using this medium to invite you to join the APC. So I don't want them to leave you well, like, all by like, yourself at the end of the day. So I can assure you, my dear friend, that our party um, will bring out the best candidates that will, you know, that will suit the needs of Nigerians. Or Mr. And Nenny. don't forget M Mr. what Nenny. we mentioned about Kiamo. Kiamo is a lawyer. I have known Kiamo in the last 25 years. I know him too well. Expressing his opinion does not mean he's right. My friend also continue to mention names and names and names. And names. But you forget to mention names of people <clears throat> who, have, who are alleging your, your party about embezzlement of funds. Most of your governors are hungry with the leadership of the party. I can tell you, I said something earlier about former President Atiku. Atiku I, is someone, right. someone I respect so much. You know, he has empowered a lot of people. But I can tell you, this time around, if they like, they should take the part, they should take the, the, the convention to Wikis back here. He can never more, let him share all the dollar. A right. lot of right. people Mr. are Shino, most of this. In the interest of time, in the interest the of dollar. time. I can tell you the dollar will not work this time around. All right. In the interest, of time, in the interest of time, in the of time, let's bring in Ose and Eni to quickly also speak on that. So, would you, would Ose, you advise? Please, you can join advise, our party. Um, I'm extending my invitation to you, please, my dear right. brother. Would you um you know look you know that the PDP instead puts forward a, a younger, <clears> and more <throat> progressive-minded candidate for 2023? Um, I want to thank my brother for the invitation to join the APC. Um, and I want to urge all Nigerians, uh, you know, get involved in politics, whether it's with the APC or with the PDP, but get involved in politics, it matters. Um, moving ahead to potential candidates in the PDP and APC, um, I think we have um, a, a few shining stars. For instance, um, if a, a Simba Jo, Vice President Simba Jo was on the APC ticket in 2023, I would be sorely tempted to join the APC and support its candidates. Thank, thank you so much. Um, Don't worry. You, I, will, I will monitor your. I will monitor. I will monitor your, your membership number. Don't worry. Uh, on the PD, on the PDP side, uh, we have uh, people like Bukola Saraki. Um, he's young. He's vibrant. He has shown capacity as a governor and as a Senate president. We have Peter B, who was exceptional as Anambra State Governor. We have people like Shea Makinde, who who who, who is a young young first term governor, but who is sort of like raising the bar on what governance should be like. Um, and if you are looking at independent candidates, you know the star, the standout performer would obviously be um, this gentleman, um, Professor Kingsley Mogalu. So we don't we don't lack for. Um, people across the political spectrum who can lead Nigeria, who can govern, yeah. um, who are young, who are progressive-minded. Um, but I think the problem is, and this is speaking to as a PDP member mm -hmm. and also to the APC, we have institutional structures and gatekeepers who sort of filter out um, these candidates. So I'm hoping that you know we, we, we see a more equitable representation of, of um, capacity and ability in our primaries, in the APC primaries and in the PDP primaries. Looking forward to it. And of course, we'll be here to have these conversations when these things play out. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Ibrahim Oshinawa uh, for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us this Friday morning. And to Ose and Neni also, I really appreciate you both. Uh, thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. On uh, sports and Nigeria's uh, interest and performance at the Olympics, Blessing Okagbari, of course, I'll quickly share that with you, qualified yesterday after her, um, her heat. Um, she uh, finished in 11.04, 11.05 seconds, can't remember. Um, but um, she has, of course, uh, qualified. Um, but, of course, that will come up in sports this morning. And, of course, the 10 athletes that have been, you know, sent back from the Tokyo Olympics um, as a result of a failure uh, to do proper uh, testing. This is where we wrap up this morning. Thank you for joining us. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember, catch us on social media. It is simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Thank you very much for watching.